Hi everyone. So I've been getting a lot of requests to do um, advanced functions videos. Um, to be completely honest, this is my first time teaching it. So I, you know, I was a little bit nervous. Um, I've taught grade 11 many times and that's why the videos, um, I really know my stuff for grade 11 for the most part, uh, not to brag. But um, for the MHF, I, you know what, I, I'll try it. I'll try it out. Um, they're not going to be as great because I don't have the best resources um, that I did before. So I, I mean, something's better than nothing, right? Uh, so. Here we go, let's try it out. I'm fortunate to have a colleague who's given me some really great PowerPoints. So uh, let's just start it off. Unit one polynomials. So chapter one, which is polynomial functions, getting into power functions. So first of all, this warm up, which one of these are polynomial functions? So um, this is not a polynomial, this is trig. And then this one is exponential. But these two guys, I mean, these two are polynomials. Um, this one's just a quadratic and this guy is what I think is a cubic. Um, so looking at both of these, they are polynomials, but only one of them is technically a power function, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. Okay, so first of all, a polynomial function. So a polynomial, I mean, you guys uh, have known what a polynomial is since probably grade 9 when you talked about a monomial, binomial, trinomial, and so on. But you can have things that are larger than trinomials and those are polynomials. And I know this looks a little bit crazy, um, but let's just go through it. Imagine like a quadratic in standard form. So you would have like x squared and this number right here, that squared, that 2, that represents the degree of the polynomial. So we in this course might not be talking about squares anymore. We might be talking about like cubes and like to the power of four and five, maybe seven and so on. Now these a values are your coefficients that are in front of each of your x's. Now the very first one is going to be your leading coefficient and that leading coefficient, like think again to quadratics. Um, when you had a leading coefficient, that number was your vertical stretch or compression and it's basically kind of the same when you have longer polynomials. If this was a negative, then it flips over the x-axis as a reflection. At the very end of the polynomial, the one that does not have an x value, um, this is your constant term. So this guy is usually your y-intercept and that does not change for longer polynomials. It's the same as when we learned about it in quadratics. Let's go through an example. Now here's an example and you know what, g of x is not in the right order so we always want to put it in the right order first before we start um, trying to identify things. The largest um, degree x value usually goes first and then we kind of go downwards in the order. So this guy has an x squared and then this guy has no x at all and we're going to put it at the end. Now that it's in order, you're going to start to identify things. So the constant term again was the one that has no x value. Then at the very front you have the x value that has the highest degree, so it's going to be a degree 4, which means it's a quartic function. Okay, and then the leading coefficient is at the very front. This one is a negative one, which means there's no stretch or compression, but there is a reflection in the x-axis. So your leading coefficient is going to be negative one. Now just some other um, terminology. This stuff is um, similar to what you've seen before. So let's just say a uh, line of symmetry is very similar to the axis of symmetry we learned in grade 10 um, that has to do with parabolas. So when we were dealing with a parabola, there was this line that cut the parabola in half and made it symmetrical on both sides. So it's almost like a mirror line. Well, we kind of have that in um, advanced functions as well. There is this line of symmetry uh, for certain polynomials. Now for other polynomials, you might get something like this. Now this kind of looks like, I mean the one above looks like an x squared, but this guy kind of looks like an x cubed graph. So this one has something called point symmetry and point symmetry is where like right in the middle of the graph I put a point and uh, it's going to be a little bit hard to show you on a PowerPoint but imagine that I keep my finger right here and I'm just going to cut this branch off. Um, even though I keep my finger here I'm going to start to rotate this branch so it's going to go like this 
and then it's going to rotate like this and it's going to continue to rotate upwards and if it overlaps the other part of the graph so essentially this part of the graph isn't moving but this part is rotating upwards and eventually it's going to overlap this branch if it can do something like that it has something called point symmetry so these are characteristics that we can use to describe our graphs later on okay now what exactly is the difference between a polynomial and a power function? So a polynomial, remember, can have many terms, but the, po the power function is like a polynomial, but it only has the one term in it. So if we go back to the warm-up, we can see that this one is probably going to be the polynomial function. And even though this is technically a polynomial, it is only one single term, so this one is actually a power function. Okay, so again, a power function is like a type of polynomial, but it is only a single term polynomial function. Let's take a look at different kinds of power functions now. So we've dealt with a linear function. This is what it looks like. Quadratics we're very familiar with. A cubic is that point symmetry one that I just showed you. And then we get into some new ones. So here is a quartic, a quintic, and a sextic. Now, Notice that all the red ones have something similar and all the blue ones also have something similar. So what we're going to do is we're going to kind of look at them separately. First of all, let's take a look at all the blue ones. Notice that the powers on each of, or I should say the exponents on each of these guys is an even number. So they give rise to these kind of diagrams. Whereas if I look at these guys who have an odd numbered exponent, they also have something in common. So if we take a look at all of these different characteristics, maybe we can kind of figure out how to identify an even degree polynomial versus an odd degree polynomial. Okay, so even degree powers. Notice that the domain is all real numbers. Technically, this guy also has a domain of all real numbers. The range is different, though, for all even and odd power functions. So this guy has a restricted range, whereas this one has a range of anything. Okay, This one has line symmetry, so there is a, that mirror line right in the middle, versus this one's going to have that point symmetry right in the middle. Okay, In terms of end behavior, they're talking about what happens to the ends of the graph. So these two ends, they're going to go up in the same direction, versus this one's ends, so here's one end, and there's another end. These guys go in opposite directions. Okay, so this is generally true of all of the odd and even degree um, polynomial functions. Sorry if I keep switching between polynomial and power functions. I mean, essentially, they're kind of the same thing. Okay, so let's go over one or two examples. Here is an example where we have, remember this is an even degree, and that's an odd degree function. So I'm going to just zoom out a little bit and you can maybe see the answers. Okay. Um, so does this represent an even degree or odd degree function? So this one again is an even and this one is an odd. So the answers are right there. State the sign of the leading coefficient. Now let's just pretend that this is a parabola. If this is a parabola and it's opening upwards, it should have a positive, sorry, that's how I write my positive, plus v positive, both the arrows are pointing up. Now this guy, normally if I'm talking about an odd degree, let's think about a cubic. A cubic should have gone like this, but because it's backwards, that means this guy must have flipped upside down. So this one probably has some sort of a negative leading coefficient or a negative a value. Okay, So the arrows went from left to right instead. The domain and range, so this guy's domain can be any x values, so all real numbers, but the y values are anything it looks like greater than or equal to zero. So I have that right there. Okay, whereas this guy can have all real numbers for the x values and all real numbers for the y values. In terms of symmetry, the first one will have line symmetry, and again the other one will have point symmetry. Now their end behavior, in terms of the, um, the textbook, so the homework will be written in a certain way and the way that they're written is um, the end behavior goes from, you remember the quadrants in grade 11, quadrant 1, 
2, 3, and 4. So we describe it as quadrant 2 going towards quadrant 1. So it goes from left to right. This guy will be from quadrant 2 all the way to quadrant 4. And we write it like this. So with Roman numerals like that. So it extends from one quadrant to the other and that's how we describe the end behavior. So this very last slide, let me zoom in again because it's kind of weird to have those strips on the end. There we go. Okay, so which one of these guys um, has this type of end behavior. So I've just listed them down and you can kind of picture what these look like on your own now that you kind of know what they are. Um, I have the reasoning right here, so positive leading coefficient and it's an odd degree which means an odd exponent. So let's just pick one at random, like let's say this one. Okay, this is a quartic which means it should look like this normally. Okay, um, it has a negative a value so instead of looking like this, it's probably going to go downwards, which means it's going from quadrant 3 to quadrant 4. And if I just take a look right here, yep, quadrant 3 to quadrant 4, there it is right there. So I'm going to leave the rest of them up to you to kind of uh, test yourself on. I hope that this was an okay attempt at my very first MHF video. Enjoy.